Good afternoon, July the 31st, 2015. Time to wrap it up for the day. I um, want to talk to you about where we started out this morning a little bit. We had this 7 to 10 was our prime sell zone. And then our buy zone, we started off in the morning at 90 to 95. This is where we wanted to engage the market was right down here. This is where we wanted to be buyers. And we finally have gotten there. But we talked about it. We took this trade live in the room. Um, we said this could be the trade of the day, and it turned out it was. And we only took three points out of it, but there was a uh, that was a nice trade. That was good for six points. Right here, we took a trade off this S uh, pattern uh, when we broke that bar's low and promptly got stopped out. I believe that's what we did. I, you know, honestly, I don't remember. Then we took off this B right here. Um, a, a trade and we had a winner right there then I uh, then we just kind of started moving to all the other markets so really really our, our original idea our levels turned out to be pretty darn good and our trade setups worked if you went through and you took all the trades scratches to small winners right here uh, this trade would have been a loser a retest uh, Failure didn't really set up there for the way that we like it. Uh, right, right up here, a retest failure. We're short. Uh, stop out right here. This trade right here is a winner. That trade's a winner. This trade right here is a scratch. If you move your uh, stop to break even on the third bar, retest failure, a winner. So we've got three losers in here. It certainly isn't perfect, but the uh, early trading uh, is the easiest trading. And that's where we combined. We didn't have too bad of a day when it was all said and done. So assuming the market closes here at 2097, what does Monday bring? We're into the future. Um, we um, try to ascertain what's going to happen today. What happened today? How will it affect us come tomorrow or sometime in the future? In this case, it'll be Globex Sunday night. So we're still in the same situation. We've got resistance in this 10 to 12 area right up in here. And we've got pretty darn good support down in the 85 area. And here we are at 98. So we got a higher low, higher high. We can buy into weakness. The easiest trade to see is to sell failure to take out this high. Um, and we'll see how that develops. So right now, screen one says buy it. Screen two. If we put it all together, it's still leaning P. If we do an I split, why did I do an I split? I go to the longest line of letters. I broke support. D, E, and H. Uh, right now, we've got a pretty clean break here at two to a high of five. Uh, we're at 98, so. Selling, 20, selling failure to take out 2100, 22. Gives ourselves a little room for Globex and then selling the uh, 5 to 7 area for sell 2. On the buy side, I, it looks like we're pointed lower, so I'm going to put uh, buy 1, 90 to 92. That's assume, I'm assuming we get a weak close. If we close this thing in the 2101, 2102 area, uh, we'll have to take another look at it uh, Monday morning. And that's it. We do have news. We've got personal income that nobody will pay any attention to. The focus will be personal spending. What's the retail account doing? Then we've got ISM manufacturing. They'll pay a lot of attention to that. So this will be one. That'll be two. Uh, construction spending, then auto and truck sales. And they will pay attention to that. So personal spending, number one. Number two, ISM manufacturing. And number three, auto and truck sales. Income won't get a lot of attention paid to it, in my most humble opinion, if there is such a thing. So we do have some news coming on Monday that could affect things and shake them up, especially if the news comes in lower than forecast.
Okay, looking at uh, both the 30-year and the node are going to show nothing but buying. Outside day, strong close. Uh, the news whipsawed us, so we've got pretty good resistance here in 27.16 to maybe 27.20. And failure to get through and take that out sets up a pretty good short, in my opinion. And then uh, we should have pretty good buying somewhere down here in the 26.24, uh, 127 even area. So this one, outside day, trading range. Uh, failure to take out and make new highs would set up a pretty nice short for us. Uh, looking at nothing but a P right here, so sell failure to take out 16 to 20, and then S2 would be uh, 27 to 31. On the buy side, um, like to get it done down in here, so the 8 to 12 area will be our buy that allow them to get stops beneath this. So buy one will be 8 to 12. And then uh, 1 to 5, playing for this breakout right in here. Got my news sites. Feel obligated to pump all this, uh, all this advertising out with sound so it gets your attention, and that's not cool for us in the room, but it is reality. Okay, uh, real strong day on the knob spread. Thus, it just makes the market explode to the upside and to the downside. So uh, you're gonna get paid in the uh, 30 year. Strong market. On the close, profit taking took us down a little bit. So last rotate up was 8, then 14, so selling failure to take out 8 to 12. And then 19 to 23. We'll lean against that on the buy side. We stopped at 27. We're at 03, so 29 to 25. That is buy one. That's where support is. And then we'll make it uh, 17 to 13, pick up this breakout down here. Don't think we have a shot at our number two buy. I hope you all are having a good time. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's an unusual uh, endeavor and avocation. And it's so easy to talk about. And it's so easy to know what you should have done after the fact. But at that moment, when you have to make the decision, uh, you don't have a 100% guarantee that it's going to go your way. You've got a setup that will make you money over time. That we can guarantee you as best you can guarantee in this industry. Um, but will every trade work? And the answer is no. And that, that's always uh, that's tough to deal with. Uh, and um, it, it doesn't get easier over time either. Until you finally get to the point, you don't care what comes next. You're just going to take a good trade and see what in the hell happens. And that's when you've arrived as a trader. Okay, we have an outside day in gold. we got a seller at, one, uh, at 1100 and we got a buyer against 80 And that's kind of where we started the day out. Uh, on the outside, 1105. Uh, on the outside, 1180. Uh, so 1180, I mean 1080 minus 1100 plus is where the market is and we're at 94. It was an outside day trading range. And you say, well, how in the hell can you draw that inference from an outside day? Well, do you know how the outside days are formed? They try to take it higher, and there's not enough buyers to break it out to the upside. They try to take it lower, there's not enough sellers to break it down, and the market ends up in the middle. So we have both sides of the market trying and failing. That idea has not left uh, the market, so that's why an outside day usually will yield a trading range without a new piece of news. Okay, sellers, 98 to the buck. So 98 to the buck, sell one. 
3 to 5, sell 2. On the buy side, our 91 to 89, buy 1. Looks like we're trying to trade a little lower right here, and then 84 to 86 for buy 2. I just, I don't think anything has really changed in gold. You have the big boys and the institutions selling it, and the retail accounts paying a hell of a premium, sometimes 20, 25% to turn bullion into coins, just to make sure they get something that they can count on if times get really, really bad. Now, everything takes longer to develop than anybody thinks it should. And if I had to make a guess, what path is America on? Japan's stagflation. And we could have 24, 20, 25, 30 years of this before it's over. Uh, so what allowed investors and traders to prosper in Japan, traders prospered, uh, is how we should build our long-term portfolios to get what happened, get what happened. Little gold, little stocks to cover inflation, and something for cash flow. And I would have to say that uh, multinational corporations are better credits than uh, the um, guys that run sovereign debt get to a point where you just can't tax sovereign debt. Nothing there to tax. Okay, um, 111 plus is where the sellers are. Didn't know what it would take to get there, but a piece of news certainly took us there in the morning and the market sold. 108.5, 109. So 109, 111 plus. That's a two-point trading range. Two full points. That's kind of where we are. Where are the buyers? Uh, 109 even to 109.50 where are the sellers uh, 111 even perhaps it's 111.25.30 so here we are um, market did try to trade up hellish just a really really big trading range so we're going to close right here got volume down here at 950 so 950 plus or minus buy one 09 even Buy two. On the uh, sell side, uh, 1015, 1042, 1048, 1054. So we can see that we're going to probably have a lot of resistance in this 40 to 50 area or 25. So we're going to make uh, 20 to 30 sell one, 45 to 55 sell two. Crude. Crude got smacked today again. Increase in rig count. More supply. You know, one of the things that would change the entire dynamics for our entire industry is to allow for the export of crude. Now, if you have to purchase crude because you don't produce enough for yourself, who would you rather buy from? Iran? Saudi Arabia? Russia? Nigeria or the United States or Canada. It'd be pretty simple, wouldn't it? And uh, it, it would it would just right kind of job growth is what it would open us up for. So and again in our infinite wisdom we don't do that. It just the imbecility, the ignorance or the outright conniving of what goes on in DC these days it's just what frustrates everybody especially those of us who have to pay taxes um, we don't get what we pay for and we get vilified for making enough money to pay their taxes really a lot of aspects of um, um, who is John Galt um, the idea that built that book by Ann Ryan um, I mean, we just see it being enacted where governments order people to do something. Well, we can't do this because we don't have access to any of this anymore. It doesn't matter. I ordered you to do it. That's how a bureaucrat thinks. Lower highs. 
we're right here at a tipping point. We take out 46.75. We've been calling for a, a retest of this 45 area. See right here at 44, that little A period. And Y was at 44 even, so 44.45 right here is pretty good support. Then it really drops down to wherever that low was, what, 42.50. This screen tells us to find a place to sell it. So we're going to get short on Wednesday afternoon, Jeff. We're going to wait and see signs that it's actually happening. We have been forewarned. Okay, we got this low right here. I think we're going to get stops beneath that. So 4650, 25 by one. Give it a little bit of room. That's a trade that's really, really, really bold. I'd like to have a setup. And then 45.50, 45.75 by two. On the sell side, 47, 47 and quarter. That's very aggressive. And then 50 to 75 will be sell two. That's it for the end of the month and the end of the week. I will see you all bright and early Monday morning. You all have a great weekend. The temperatures are climbing back up. We got a lot of rain in this last storm, so we'll have humidity to match, but hopefully we're only looking at the uh, low 90s as opposed to the low 100s. You all have a great weekend. I am out of here.